Facebook and uh, AT&T. Communicating something at a distance. You mean like a phone call? Telecommunications engineering, in uh, at least the way we uh, have it here at RIT, is a branch of uh, engineering technology. So we, we set it up so that uh, students start out with a basis, uh, a basic education in engineering technology, including uh, computers, computer programming, uh, circuit theory, electronics, and of course the, the physics and mathematics. Telecommunications engineering. Uh used to be more related just to like the telephone network and the Ma Bell and AT&T up until like the 80s but with the advent of the internet in the 90s and today it's really branched into that whole generation so telecommunications today includes um, like wireless communications um, internet and everything really any communications in general but now it's a lot more prevalent in the internet side Well, before I came to RIT, I worked with Bell Laboratories, which was the research and development part of the, uh, of the Bell system, which used to provide virtually all the telephone service in the United States. And uh, it was a very special place for me. It was a place I wanted to work from the time I heard about it when I was a kid, and, and luckily got to work there. Uh, most, of, most of the work I did uh, had to do with developing and designing new equipment for telecommunication networks. And I worked on many projects uh, toward, toward the time I retired from Bell Laboratories. I was working mainly in optical communication. Well, as I said, they're, they're going to start off just getting a, a, a good foundation in engineering technology, uh, studying the subject I talked about earlier. As they get into um, their third and fourth year of study, they'll start seeing some courses that are specialized in telecommunication, uh, things like transmission systems and, and, and learning how uh, uh, radiation propagates through the air, how signals go over wires, how signals go through fibers, all that kind of technology. They also learn a little bit about the history of telecommunication and, and also the important role of uh, government and other policy in, in the development of telecommunication. They're going to really learn about all the different telecommunications networks out there and available and a lot of the theories behind it. So you're going to understand not just about the equipment, you're really going to understand how it works at the, all the different levels from the different like layers 1 to 5 and stuff like that. So behind me here, this is the telecommunications lab and there's all different types of equipment in here. There's um, the people back there are working on uh, Cisco routers. And this is the Cisco Academy here at RIT, so they teach the CCNA classes here. This box is a Cisco ONS, and what it does is it multiplexes like slower lines, like a T1 line or an Ethernet line, into a higher speed like OC192 or OC48 line. That equipment there, the OmniStar gear, is actually what you would find in a cable telephone service provider's head end. That is where the uh, television programming signals get fed in from satellite and they get uh, digitally encoded and digitally modulated and they um, get uh, placed onto RF carriers um, and then sent out on, um, on the fiber optic cables. A key part of every telecom network is timing. Um, synchronization is key and this timing source made by Symmetricom is a, a source that takes a, a GPS signal, stratum one level signal, and then can distribute it throughout any kind of equipment that happens to be located at the same perimeter. This equipment here is an IP PBX and some IP phones. So what it is is it is a server that allows the, all the IP phones to use voice over internet protocol to communicate. 